If you're going to build one of these, you're going to need all of these. One of the most common questions I've been asked and I've seen posted online is what kind of tools are required to build a Zenith Cruiser or a 750 Stoll or probably any Zenith airplane. Hopefully this video will give you a good idea of what kind of tools you're going to need to build one of these. First, let's start off with some basic tools you probably already have in your shop. Things like pliers, side cutters, screwdrivers, a socket set, and a ratchet. Simple tools like this that you probably already have are going to come in very handy for building this airplane. Another really handy tool to have is something where you can mark a 90 degree angle. So something like this or everyone probably has something like this. You will use this a lot when you need to draw a line perpendicular to an edge. Now speaking of drawing lines, go to Walmart and buy yourself a bunch of these Sharpie pens and make sure you get the ones with a real fine tip. These do not last long and in this airplane I've probably gone through about 20 of those so don't be afraid to buy too many. Now to go along with the Sharpies you're, want, you're going to want to have some rulers and you can have different kinds. One of the ones I really like is this one because it's flexible and you can use that if you need to make a line on a curved surface like your wing or your cowling. Now Clecos are something you're going to use a lot of. And you can see there are three different kinds, well actually there's four different kinds you're going to need. And they come in different colors. So the copper ones are 1 8 inch, the black ones are 5 30 seconds, and the silver ones are 3 30 seconds. And you're also going to need some of these ones. They're gold and these are uh, 3 16 And these ones you probably only need about, I don't know, 5 or 10. These ones here, all of these, you can't have too many. I would suggest buying about two or three hundred of each and that might be enough for you. Now if you don't know what these are, a Clico is a temporary rivet where if you have two holes drilled or a hole drilled in two different pieces, the rivets temporarily hold those pieces together until you rivet them. Now in order to use a rivet you need a special pair of pliers. You can see I have two. It's a really good idea to have two because during the build of your airplane you're probably going to have people helping you and it's nice if two people can be clecoing at the same time. And the way this works is you just put a cleco in the pliers like that and when you squeeze it the tip extends and it gets smaller and when you release it the tip comes in and locks the parts together. Well speaking of holes you're going to need something to drill a hole with. I have a porter cable 20 volt I think it's a lithium ion portable drill, electric drill. Buy a good one, don't buy a cheap one. You will use this thing over and over and over during your build. Now to go along with the drill, obviously you're going to need some drill bits, right? You're going to need a few different kinds, but mostly number 40s, 30s, and 20s. I would buy a ton of these. I don't know about you guys, I don't sharpen drill bits. Years ago my dad had a drill bit sharpener and I've tried to use it and it just never seemed to work nice. I prefer having a new drill bit. So you really will go through a lot of drill bits. So you may want to order 10 or 20 of each right up front. Now also you're going to see in here I have, well here's a 6 inch drill bit and also you'll notice on here it's got this little sliding lock. There's a little set screw in here and you can move this up and down. Sometimes you want to drill a hole, but you want to be careful if something is under it. Oh, I got him. Um, and this thing here will slide up and down so you can set it up to here if you only want to go down a quarter of an inch or so. These are pretty nice to have. Now in this tube here, I have 12 inch drill bits. I have a number 30, 40, and a number 20. And I would really suggest you buy one of each. You're going to need these throughout the build just because some places are hard to reach and if you have a short drill bit like that, the chuck of the drill will hit other parts and you won't be able to get a nice hole. So buy one of each of these. And as we're talking about holes, let's talk about a deburring tool. When you drill a hole in a piece of aluminum, 
it will make the edges rough. And this tool here has a sharp little bit and you just simply put it in a hole and twist it one or two times and it cleans up that hole. This is just an extension and it comes in handy and I do believe it comes with the tool. This is also a deburring tool and it's used a little bit differently than this one, which brings me to another tool you're going to need. Go ahead and pick up a couple of these unibits or unibits because you will use these for drilling bigger holes. Well, let's say you're making an instrument panel or something or mounting an antenna and you have a hole and you need to enlarge in it. The best way to do that is to use the unibit instead of just a large drill bit. This will get you a nice round hole. And obviously the size hole you want depends on how far you drill. Now you can see that a regular deburring tool won't work because that's smaller than the hole. So we have this one here and with this curved piece right here, you can just go right along the outside of that hole like that and it makes it perfectly smooth and takes off any burrs on the hole. Well, let's start working our way left to right with some of these other tools. Obviously a pair of shears. I think you can buy these pretty much anywhere. These come in handy for trimming small pieces of sheet aluminum. Now you also have these shears here with the left and right. They're made for cutting curves in aluminum. You may or may not need these. You may want to hold off on buying them until you do need them. Mostly I think they're used on this section here on the fuselage but I think the newer kits probably already have this part cut out. At some point during your build, you're going to need a digital level. You'll need this when you're installing your wings and you're setting the horizontal stabilizer and drilling the holes on the fuselage. You don't need to spend a lot of money. I bought this one at Harbor Freight and it works just perfectly. Going down the line here, I have two different styles of fluting pliers and you may or may not need the fluting pliers. I think they're really handy to have, but it may not be an absolute requirement to buy a pair. Now the reason you might need a pair of fluting pliers is because some of these L angles, which you will become very familiar with if you're building a Zenith airplane, need to be curved. For example, on my wing, the L angles under the skin in these two areas here, I have curved because the skin naturally curves. And in order to curve an L angle, you put little notches in it basically. So if you just take an L angle and you squeeze this on here, you can see that it puts this little ripple in it. And what that does, if I keep doing this like this, you might be able to see how it's starting to curve that L angle. So now instead of being straight, it's got a little bit of a curve to it, and these little flutes in here take up the extra material. So these fluting pliers just have a little tooth on it that creates a little notch on an L angle or a wing rib or something like that. Here's a tool that is nice to have, but certainly not required. What this is for is for marking holes evenly spaced. So you can see the further you spread this apart, the, the different spacing you can get, have in the holes. And again, it's not required. You could simply draw a line with a straight edge and then measure off every inch or whatever you want. Or you just have two points and you put this between them and you have an evenly spaced hole. So it's kind of nice. I've used it quite a bit. This tool is a countersunk tool. It can fit on a drill or a drill press and it's used for making countersunk holes. I have a whole kit here with different size tips. But this is pretty handy to have, and I do believe it is required in some spots. Obviously, you're going to be pulling or squeezing a lot of rivets. This is a pneumatic rivet tool, and this is just a manual one. Uh, you can get both of those at Zenith, and I recommend you do buy them from Zenith because they have special tips that are used to curve the rivets that Zenith provides you with a kit. You will need sandpaper for smoothing the edges of aluminum. This is 400 and you can buy that locally. All right, on this side of the table, I'm going to skip around just a little bit. This is just a Dremel. 
you're going to use a Dremel quite a bit. You probably already have one. If not, go to Home Depot and buy one. This is an, an angle drill. This attaches to the drill and it just gives you a 90 degree drill. And I think this is very handy to have, but maybe not absolutely required. These tools right here are called, called hole finders and they are for slipping in between sheets of aluminum so that you can find a hole that's matched to a hole that's already on the bottom sheet of aluminum. An example of this might be if I have all the holes drilled in the outside cowling and I want to match it to the inside, or if I have the holes drilled on the inside to the bottom cowling but not on the outside, what I could do is I could slip this in here in the hole, put this in here like that, and then now this piece, you can drill right through the top here and it's, you can drill a hole in here that's lined up with the hole in there. Here are some other nice to haves. This is an angle grinder. You can buy really good ones or you can buy them at Harbor Freight and they all work exactly the same. Now this thing here has a scotch Bright wheel you can put on it or a disc. It has different attachments like this for smoothing the edges of aluminum. So it's just really handy for a lot of different things, but it's not required. You can use sandpaper instead. I've kind of showed this in one of the other videos. It's just a, a bolt gauge. You can put a bolt in here and find out the length of the bolt. It'll tell you what it is. These right here I found to be really handy. Again, not required, but probably worth buying some. And they are little clamps that are just like a Clico, but instead of used for a hole, they're just made to clamp stuff together. So you just squeeze it with your regular Clico pliers, pliers, you put something in there, you let it go, and it holds it. They're real nice to have, they're very handy. All right, here's another tool that's really handy to have. It's a pair of vice grips with these wheels welded on. And what this does is it gives the edge of aluminum a very slight bend. And really all edges that are riveted together should be bent slightly. And it helps to really seal the uh, two pieces of aluminum. You can see on the side of my fuselage, I've used it on there for the top piece that comes down and it really makes the edges nice and tight. On my wing, I did not use it and I really wish I did because there's a tiny, tiny little space between the wing skins that I can slip a fingernail in uh, and if I would have used this tool on there, I wouldn't have that problem. And you can see on the very edge here, I actually added two more rivets just to hold the edge down. This tool here is a nibbler. It just takes a sheet of aluminum like this and just takes out a little nibble. I use this actually to build my entire instrument panel to cut big square holes. So that's nice to have. It might be nice to have a pair of digital calipers. This is a fairly good set, but I bought another one at Harbor Freight and it works perfectly. You will need one of these big monsters. I bought this one used at a, a yard sale, but this is used to crimp the flight control cables. All right guys, I think the last thing on the table here, and I want to spend a little bit of time with this, is a rivet squeezer. And this goes along with these different kinds of dies. So let's talk about this a little bit. There's a lot of places on the airplane that have access covers like this. And they're held on with screws so that during maintenance or inspections you can remove them and, ins and inspect what's ever on the inside of the airplane. Well, in order to attach these with screws, each hole has a nut plate on it. And if you don't know what a nut plate is, it's just a little threaded part like this with tabs on it. And it gets riveted behind the skin. And what a lot of people do is they put two domed rivets, just like the rivets you'd see on the, the fuselage that, that stick up and are round and domed. So you have all these round domed rivets around here and then you put your access cover on. Well your access cover is now not sitting flush with the skin, it's sitting on top of rivets like this. And that's just not the correct way to do it. So as you can see on mine, all the rivets are flush with the skin and these, those were all put on with that rivet squeezer. I want to show you how this works. So in this piece of scrap aluminum, I've drilled a hole. And let's say that we wanted to rivet on this nut plate to this hole. Obviously, we'd have three holes for the nut plate, but I'm just going to show you the one. So after you drill the hole, obviously the first thing we're going to do is we're going to deburr it. 
on both sides and that gets rid of any of the rough edges on there and makes it a nice clean hole. Now one of the things you might be wondering is since this is has a dimple coming this way how do you put a a nut plate on there and have the nut plate sit flush because this just wants to slide over the, the dimple. Well I have a good trick for that. What we're going to do is dimple the little dog ears on a nut plate. So this top piece here I'm going to remove that and replace it with this. It's the same thing but you can see it's a lot skinnier. So we'll take that one out. We'll just push that one in. Make sure this closes all the way by unscrewing it. And then we take our nut plate. We put it through here like that. And you see how this little, the skinnier die here fits in the nut plate. And then we just give it a good squeeze. And we've dimpled, you probably can't tell on here, but we've dimpled this nut plate so that it will fit nicely right over the dimple in the aluminum. Well, you can see I've replaced the dies in here with smooth ones. These are just two smooth ones that are going to smash a rivet. Now, obviously, we need to close up that space, so we just unscrew this until it looks about right. And as you get, as you use these, you'll you'll kind of get a feel for where to adjust it. Now we're going to use a different type of rivet for this nut plate. These are solid rivets and they are meant to be squeezed. They're just aluminum and these are actually called AN426AD3-3. Now the letter or the number at the end, the bigger that number is, the longer the rivet. So here's what we do. We put the rivet in the dimple and you can see how that fits perfectly flush with the skin. Now on the back side of here we would have the nut plate but I'm not going to rivet this on because I don't want to waste a nut plate. And with our squeezer here with the two flat dies in it we just take this if I can get it in the camera and we put it on there and we squeeze it. There we go. And now you have a perfectly flush rivet. And if there was a big hole here and you have an access cover that sits on top of this, the access cover would fit real nice and flush with the top of the skin because we have a flush rivet on it. You can get these tools in different models. This is the very basic cheapest one and I think it's about $85. You can get these that have heads that remove and different jaw depths and things like that. But all you need for this airplane is the very basic cheapest one. I really recommend that you buy one. It's not absolutely essential to build the airplane, but I think if you want to do the job correctly, you need to get one of these. And you might not even have to buy it either. Probably somebody in your EAA chapter or somebody else you know that might have built an airplane probably has one that you can borrow. All right guys, I think I have covered all of the tools that you're going to need to build this airplane. Now I didn't show you a drill press or a bandsaw, or some other simple tools that I'm sure you probably already have around your workshop. But what I've laid out on the table, I think is all of the tools that I've used so far on this airplane. Now, if I've missed a tool, leave it in the comment section below because then that will help everybody else that watches the video after you. One last thing before I go, if you wanna buy a t-shirt like this, go to aircrafttshirts.com. I have a lot of airplane and Zenith stickers at aircraftstickers.com. That does help support my YouTube channel since I don't make a dime on these videos. Thanks for watching everybody and uh, we'll see you on the next video.